Hi, welcome everybody. This is Yohan and today I am back with a new tutorial. So in this episode, I would love to share this duffel bag project. The finished measurements of this duffel bag are approximately 18 and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall and the depth is about nine inch. This bag comes with many pockets. So we've got a slip pocket and a zipper pocket at the front. On the side panels, there are two slip pockets and a zipper pocket as well. And inside there are three slip pockets. I made my slip pocket using the clear vinyl fabric and also there is one zipper pocket as well. This is a very functional duffel bag. I reckon this as a medium sized duffel bag so it's not too small but it's not too large either. So it's great for um, a weekend travel. For this project I use the cotton quilting fabric that I got from Joanne. Um, you can also use canvas or home decor weight fabric and I divided this tutorial into three videos. On the first video which the one that you're watching right now we're gonna work on the side panels, the back exterior and the handles. On the second video we're gonna work on the back interior and the assembling of the bag and on the third video I've got a bonus tutorial on how to make a strap cushion. You may download the cutting instructions plus the template for the side panels. I will have the link in the description box down below. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and without further ado, let's get started. All right, first we're gonna work on the side panels. So go ahead and print out the side panel template. When you print the template, you wanna print it as it is. So do not scale, keep it at 100%. If you're in doubt, there are two square gauges here. I provided one inch gauge and a two centimeter gauge for metric users. So if you want to, you can measure either one. And if it is correct, that means you are good to go. The first line here is the main template for the side panels. Now the second line or the blue line here is the template for the stabilizer. And if you see the red dash line here, it is the cutting line for the side pockets. So you can either cut the template directly from the paper, which means you will need to print at least two of these, one for the side panel and then for the pockets and one for the stabilizer. Or what you can do, you can print one paper and then if you've got a tracing paper, you can trace each the side panel and then trace the side pocket and then the stabilizer as well so do what makes sense for you to cut the template we will need to have the fabric unfold so here i've got a 12 inch wide fabric that i cut from the width of the fabric this should be enough for the side panels and the pockets as well now take the template and then we're going to align the straight edges with the fold line, just like so. Now you can pop a couple of pins to keep the template in place, or you can also use fabric weights, just like what I do here. And then go ahead and cut. You can either use rotary cutter or fabric scissors, whichever one you prefer. All right, so you should end up with something like this. So go ahead and cut one more piece. And then you will also need to cut two more pieces from the lining fabric. Snip a little bit around the top center fold line, just to make a little notch there. Next, we're gonna cut the stabilizer. In this case, I'm using the foam stabilizer. So go ahead and take the template for the stabilizer and then cut it on fold. This time I'm using my scissors though. I think um, this is just too thick for me to go through with my rotary cutter. And this time I'm using the Bosal double-sided fusible foam stabilizer. This thing has been sitting in my stash for a while. So finally I got it out and I thought this project will be great for this. Of course, you can also use one-sided fusible foam or the sew-in kind, such as soft and stable. All right, now we're gonna apply the foam stabilizer to the side panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay my 
side panel piece wrong side up and then lay the foam stabilizer and of course we want to center the position of the foam stabilizer now since i'm using a double-sided fusible stabilizer i'm gonna go ahead and grab my lining and lay that wrong side down and then fuse them together now if you use one-sided fusible no problem simply fuse the stabilizer to the exterior piece first and once you've done that go ahead and lay the lining wrong side down and then base stitch all around with quarter of an inch of seam allowance now if you use the non-fusible one such as soft and stable what you can do you can cut up a lightweight interfacing the same size as the side panel and then go ahead and fuse that on top of the foam stabilizer so the interfacing will be sealing the stabilizer and keep it in place and once you've done that you can go ahead and base stitch the lining in place next we're gonna work on the side pockets so go ahead and prepare the template for the side pocket panel and then cut two exterior panels two lining panels and two fusible woven interfacing panels apply the fusible woven interfacing to the wrong side of the exterior pieces now take one of the exterior piece and one of the lining piece lay them right sides together and then sew along the top edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance Press the seams open and then fold wrong sides together and then press again and then top stitch along the top edges. Lay the pocket on the right side of one of the side panel, aligning the sides and the bottom edges and then you can clip them in place. Then you want to base stitch with quarter of an inch of seam allowance to keep the pocket in place. Alright, so our first side panel is done. Next, we're going to work on the second side panel pocket, which comes with an extra zipper pocket feature. So here I've got my inner pocket piece. Apply a little bit of fusible woven interfacing to the wrong side of the inner pocket piece just to stabilize the zipper template area. Fuse the interfacing about half an inch down from the top. Next, we're going to make the zipper template. So go ahead and draw a 6 inch by 3 8 of an inch of rectangle. And you want to center the position just like so. Draw a horizontal line right on the center and then you want to draw a little triangle on 45 degrees angle on both corners and you want to draw the template about an inch down from the top edge. Now lay the inner pocket piece on the right side of the exterior pocket piece with the right sides together of course. And you want to lay the inner pocket piece about half an inch down from the very top edge of the exterior piece. Now go ahead and pop a couple of pins just to secure them in place. And then sew along the outer line of the template. Cut the center line and also the little triangles at the corner. Just be careful not to cut through the stitches when you get to the corner though. Now turn the inner pocket towards the wrong side. So I'm going to finger press this for now just to keep everything in place. And then give this a proper pressing to make everything nice and neat. Now let's prepare the zipper. You will need at least a 7 inch long zipper. We're going to use a regular all-purpose zipper 1 inch wide. 
Now, if you want to use basting tape to baste your zipper, go ahead and do that now. However, I couldn't find my basting tape when I did this part of the video. So I decided to baste this with hand stitching. So I'm going to go ahead and place my zipper template on the zipper, just like that. Then I'm going to place a couple of pins along the edges just to hold the zipper in place. And then I'm going to grab my hand stitching needle and then baste stitch all around to keep the zipper in place. So this is a great alternative if you are out of basting tape. I'm stitching with very long stitch length, like about half an inch stitch length. This way it will be easier to remove the stitches later. And here I've already base stitched my zipper in place. Now let's sew all around the zipper template. Now I'm going to remove the basting thread. Then cut off the excess zipper. Fold the inner pocket in half, matching the short edges together, just like that. And then you can pin them in place. Then sew the sides and the top with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. And that's it, our side zipper pocket is done. Now let's go ahead and grab the pocket lining piece, lay that right side down, and then sew along the top edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Again, you want to press the seams open, fold the wrong sides together, and then top stitch. Lay the pocket on the right side of the side panel and then base stitch with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Now we're going to work on the front exterior pocket. So you will need to cut five panels just like shown on the screen right now or you may simply follow the cutting instructions on the PDF. Fuse panel 1 and 2 with fusible woven interfacing that you cut 1 inch smaller sidewise and then center the position just like so. So this is how we're going to lay out the zipper with panel 1 and panel 2. If your fabric has directional print, you want to make sure to lay that out accordingly so it will be aesthetically nice. And I also position the zipper where the zipper pull is on my left hand side. You can do otherwise, it's totally up to you. We're going to start by sewing the panel 1 or the upper zipper panel. So go ahead and lay them right sides together, just like so. And then secure them in place with some sewing clips and then sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Now you can open the fold and then press the seams. You can either use hair marker like I do here or you can just finger press or use iron on low setting. And then go ahead and top stitch. Now you want to lay panel 2 right side up and then lay the zipper right side down just like so. Then you want to lay panel 3 right side down, secure them in place with some sewing clips, and then sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Again, you want to open the sandwich and then press the seams, both the outside and the inside panel as well, and then top stitch. Trim off the excess zipper. Now go ahead and lay panel 4 right side up and then lay the zipper panel wrong side down, just like so. Pin them in place and then go ahead and baste stitch all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance.
All right, now you want to take panel 5 and lay that right sides together with the zipper panel and then stitch along the top edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Now go ahead and press the seams, just be mindful with the zipper and then go ahead and top stitch. And you may as well base stitch the sides and the bottom with about quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Next you want to prepare the exterior pieces so go ahead and cut two from the main fabric and you will also need to cut two fusible fleece. Cut the fusible fleece an inch smaller and then you want to apply the fusible fleece on the wrong side of the exterior piece and of course you want to center the position and follow the manufacturer's instruction in fusing the fusible fleece. Now we're going to position the front pocket panel right on the center of the front exterior piece. So you can do this by folding the fabrics in half and then matching the center fold. When you lay out your pocket, you want to make sure that the bottom edges are aligned. And there should be about 6 inch distance from the edges of the exterior piece to the edges of the pocket piece. Now go ahead and pin them in place and then stitch along the sides and the bottom with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Next, we're going to work on the handles. So go ahead and cut two strips of fabric, four inch wide, and you want to cut them from the width of the fabric, and then trim off the selvage ends evenly. So the length of your strip should be between 40 and 42 inch. And then you want to fuse the wrong side with fusible woven interfacing that you cut two inch wide and about an inch shorter from the length of your handle. And of course, you want to center the position of the interfacing. Fold the handle in half, wrong sides together, and then press, and then open the fold, and then fold the edges towards the center fold, and then press, and then fold everything in half again, and press. Top stitch the long edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance, starting from the open edge first. And here I've got both of my handles ready to go. We're going to use the edges of the front pocket piece as the guide to position the handle. However, you will need to draw extended line. So go ahead and measure 9 inches from the bottom edges. So you may use your fabric marker or chalk marker to draw the extended line beyond the top edge of the pocket. And of course, the distance from the side edge to the mark line should be consistent, which is 6 inches. So I finally found my basting tape. So let's go ahead and apply basting tape to the side edges of the pocket from the bottom up to the 9 inch point mark. And we're going to do the same to the opposite side. Peel the top layer of the basting tape off. Position the strap right on the basting tape. Center the position. Make sure the strap is overlapping the edges of the pocket piece by half an inch. Do the same to the opposite side. Just make sure that your strap isn't twisted. Use a couple of sewing clips to secure the bottom and the top. Now go ahead and stitch the handle in place from the bottom up to the 9 inch point. Make an X at the top and then you want to repeat the same to the opposite side. Start sewing from the bottom. I highly recommend to use your walking foot to make the sewing even. You can simply follow the existing stitch line of the strap. And as you get to the 9 inch point, you can go ahead and pivot and then make the X 
and it's no problem at all if you have to go through the same line twice. Alright, here I've already sewn my front handle. As you can see, now we've got a slip pocket along with a zipper pocket. For the back exterior, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. So measure 6 inch from both side edges and then you wanna apply basting tape from the bottom up to the 9 inch point. Now we're gonna peel the top layer off. Now go ahead and place the strap. Again, you wanna center the position or if you wanna be very exact, just measure 5.5 inch from the side edge. Once everything is secured, go ahead and sew the handles in place the same way you did before, from the bottom up to the 9 inch point and then make an X at the top. Now let's work on the D-ring tabs. And we're gonna fold and press this the same way we did with the handles. And you should end up with a 5 by 1 inch strip. And then go ahead and stitch along the edges. Now you can go ahead and cut the strip in half. Simply measure 2.5 inch from the edge and then cut. Now take the D-ring and then insert the strip through the hole of the D-ring just like that. Position that right on the center top of the side panel and then you can clip them in place. Do the same with the other one. Then go ahead and stitch this in place with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Alright, so the deering tabs are already sewn. Next we're gonna work on the interior of the bag. Now go ahead and continue by watching the part 2 of this duffel bag series.